what up? Hey, listen to me. You talk about freaking excited. This is the first, this is the first episode. First episode. Get it together. You rocking with your boy Donnie, man. And I'm so excited, so excited to have y'all join me for my first freaking episode. Get it together podcast, man. Hey, listen, we about to go in. I got a super, super dope guest. Let me just Ooh. hold on, hold on. Let me let Ooh. me read some of the accolades. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Let me read some of the accolades. So, so first of all, my guy, he appeared on uh, Aspire TV's uh, We Got Next. Yep. Okay, let's talk about that. He was on Fox TV, One Night Stand. Okay, Apollo Theater, TBS Just for Lab comedy, comedy special. He won Search for the One. Dang. Because he is that one. Dang. Huh? This dude huh? sounds, hey, this guy sounds magnificent. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he to- I ain't going to tell you who he toured with yet, but he toured, he toured with, you know, some, some, some big name people. I'm going to get into that. He recorded his own comedy special called Run With It. Mm-hmm. Huh? It's available on Amazon and other streaming services. You know what I'm saying? Any any tour with, with his with his uncle, okay? Dick Gregory. Rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? So we are not only talking about one of the dopest comedians in the whole world. We are talking about the unbelievable. Oh, hold on. And I Google his net worth. Hold on, whoa, whoa, I Googled whoa, his net whoa, worth. Whoa, I forgot whoa. to Google his net worth, y'all. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 2.5 billion. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. 2.5 billion. <laughs> Give it up for my brother, Mark Gregory. Yo. What's up? What's up, bro? <laughs> in- hey, I appreciate you, dog. That's the <laughs> intro. What's up with that it? That is a real intro. Hey, bro, listen. This is my first episode. Okay. I said, I said, I want to have somebody on my first episode who I who I not only know. Yeah. But somebody who I who I love, who I've grown with, mm-hmm. right, in our craft. Um, somebody who takes what they do super serious. Yeah. And somebody who um um who inspired me. Yeah. Right? Inspired me to 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 do comedy, right? Yeah. And not as no career or nothing like that. We yeah. get into that. But you just an inspiration, man. Like uh, um somebody came up to my to the mall today, right, when I was working. And uh, they they just talked about how how dope your set was, how dope you are as as a as a comedian. Mm-hmm. And they mentioned they was like, you know, and, and what's so crazy about Mark is like I noticed that it was. <laughs> I'm gonna just shout my guy out. I'm gonna shout you out. It was my bro Phil. Okay, Phil, <laughs> Phil, Phil, Phil. Yeah, yeah, Phil. Phil was in the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with, with his, with his, with his lady. Bridget, right? Yeah, yeah. Phil and Bridget. <laughs> yeah. So and he was like, man, what I noticed is this dude was so dope, so funny, had us in stitches. And was all clean, you yeah. know what I mean? Like all clean comedy, man. So, t- so, so, bro, just kind of give give us a little a little history, like you know where where you come from, man. Um, you know how'd you how'd you how'd you even get into comedy? Like, what was it about comedy? Did you feel pressured because yeah. Unk was doing it, or it was yeah. just like, man, you just grew up around? How'd you get into it? So this is how I got into it. So all right. Initially, you know, I was uh, I ran track in high school and college, right? Okay. And um, I, I read that I was tripping. I was like, okay. Yeah. So I went to Ole Miss. Shout out SEC. Uh-huh. But no. Um. So honestly, man, I thought that I was gonna have a professional career in track and field. You know, I thought I was gonna get a Nike contract. Okay. Um, go to the Olympics and things of that nature. Yeah. And like, I was all conference, all American, all SEC. But to like get to that next level, like it's like a level of talent that I had to get a scholarship. But yeah. to take it to the next level, I mean, we talking about like out of this universe. So mm-hmm. when I was in at Ole Miss, Tyson Gay was okay. at Arkansas. Okay. He's the American record holder in, in the 100 meter dash. Okay. Wallace Spearman was at Arkansas. I mean, he won a, a medal in the 08 Olympics. Okay. And there is a defining moment that lets you know that this ain't, this ain't it's not going to happen. Okay. So I give you an example. <laughs> SEC finals. Okay. Right? 200 okay. meter dash. We in the blocks. Runners take your mark. Get set. Boom. I look up. I'm on my first step out of the blocks. Tyson Gay already five <laughs> steps into the race. I was like, you know what, fam? I just need to focus. <laughs> I need to focus on my books, dog. This is, it's not going to happen, dog. It's not going to happen, right? Ain't it. So, all right. So, I'm done with my eligibility. But at this time, 
I'm teaching Bible study on campus. You oh, wow. know what I mean? So to be honest with you, I really wanted to be a youth pastor, dog. Like I was not thinking about comedy or nothing like that. Wow. So when I was at Ole Miss, I was like really involved in a fellowship of Christian athletes. Okay. You know what I mean? Like that was huge at Ole Miss. And it was this, this guy named Wes. Wes was super cool. Everybody loved him. And Wes had pool with all of the sports. Like, he would travel with us to track meet sometimes. He would travel on the, the private plane with football and basketball. Like, everybody loved dude, mm. you know? Real good Christian guy. So he left and went to Auburn to start uh, to take over Fellowship of Christian Athletes at Auburn. Okay. And I was going to do this internship with him. And the internship was basically, like, you kind of, like, raise your support. And um, mm. people financially, you, right? Financially, okay. right? Okay. So I was like, all right, cool. This is what I want to do. I want to be a youth pastor. I love athletes. Boom, boom. So that's what I was going to do. So then when he went that first year, he was like, hey, listen, it's not how it is at Ole Miss. Like, you can come, but it's not going to be. They not rocking with me like that. Mm. So I was like, all right, cool. So during this time, I'm just working on my degree. I'm done with track and field. And there's this huge void. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do in my life. Wow. One of my boys who moved out to L.A. right when we finished high school, mm -hmm. he started doing comedy immediately. And he was like, we would talk every day. And he was like, dude, do comedy. Like, he was just every day drilling in my head. And at this point, I'm really starting to feel God tell me to start writing jokes. But was you, hold on, have you always been, like... Hilarious. Okay. Yes, okay. hilarious. Okay. I mean, and when I think about it, dude, <laughs> like, I should have saw the writing on the wall. Like, when I, before I went to Ole Miss, I went to this junior college called Garden City Community College. Okay. Imagine the most talented athletes in the country. We all from hoods across America. Right, and we went to this JUCO, bro. JUCO was wild, dog. So, like, so what? So what is that? JUCO is like you from Cincinnati, okay. my man from Florida. Okay. We all make like my my roommate, my freshman year played in the NFL. So football, basketball, crazy athletes. Either your test scores was low or whatever. <laughs> so we would be, uh, and our track team was nice. Like the times we ran at JUCO, we were the place at NCAA championships. Okay, so. We would, um, and since our football team was good, we had a real nice charter bus. Huh. So we would go from like Kansas to run at University of Houston, TCU, all over the place. So we would be on the charter bus and we would take me and this dude from Dallas, Cedric Pinson, super funny. Hmm. We would put the spotlights on the bus on our seats and we Cedric would sit next to me, and we would just do improv for like an hour and a half. He was super funny. Hold on, spot. What'd you use? What'd you use? Like, the spotlight? you know, like when you get on the Greyhound bus, it's the, oh, the light the over click. your head. So that was our like spotlight. In the airplane. Yeah, in the, the airplane. Okay. We would turn the lights off, and we would just go. You know wow. what I mean? Like, super, super funny. That, I mean, dude, even the worst moments in my life, comedy has been there. But I, I feel like huh. what I've done, and I think what a lot of people do, is we kind of like, compartmentalize aspects of our life gotcha. right like yeah. for me it was like i knew i was funny but i never thought about doing comedy so um i think that happens to a lot of us yeah. man like we'll like we'll be naturally good at something mm -hmm. and we don't like we we lose the opportunity to make what we're good at a business 100 percent. you know what i mean like if it come natural to you like that's yeah you, you're gonna do something you love doing yeah. you know what i mean no but yeah 100%. go ahead man yeah so i mean i had that moment um even man i remember my last track meet we were at uh running at indiana university and my tra my track coach uh older white southern gentleman named joe walker he knew dick gregory was my uncle mm -hmm. and we on this bus man and i'm blazing people on the bus hitting people with jokes <laughs> bomb 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 right and our coach was like gregory you know you should probably do comedy <laughs> like your uncle right still not thinking about it man so anyway this is 2006. I'm thinking, like, I'm really start feeling like God is like, yo, start writing jokes. Mm. So I get a notepad, and I write for a month. And I went over. I had three teammates, one who laughed at everything, okay. one who didn't laugh at anything, okay. and one who was kind of in the middle. In the middle. <laughs> and I would go over all their apartments and be like, what you think about this? What you think about this? And I knew if I could make the dude who didn't laugh at anything oh, yeah. laugh, it was a good joke. Absolutely. My man who laughed at everything, that was just the confidence builder. Because I... <laughs> I needed him after my man was like, boy, that's trash, right, you know? Right, 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 right. And um, honestly, I already had the advantage because I had been teaching Bible study the past four years. So you was used to being in front of people. I, I already, like, is that where you got your start of, like, really being in front of people yeah, is Bible study? Yeah, so oh, that's crazy. because I feel like the two disciplines, like, really are intertwined. No, absolutely. Because comedy and preaching is, comedy is in premise, Middle part of the joke yep. and a punchline. Same thing. You know what I mean? And, like, a yep. message is typically intro, three points, and bring it home. Unless you like the Baptist preacher who had you in church all day and it's like, fam, 
You beating the dead horse, yeah, my yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take us to the cross. Let us go. <laughs> but yeah, so and I you put, gotta, you gotta. The whole the whole thing about both is you got to keep people's attention. You got to keep people. Attention. You got to entertain, bro. You they have like, to. You know, entertainment, especially with us, it got to be an entertainment factor. It has to be, bro. If yeah. you ain't keeping our attention, like we're we're tuning out. We, especially at this generation, yes, boy. So. Listen, if them points ain't fired, they're gonna be like, yes. So anyway, yeah, they on their phone yeah. all day. So um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man. So I, I put a show together on campus. Okay. And I was funny the first time. Oh, wow. Like, I was really funny. And again, I, I mean, I already had the advantage because I had, I mean, to, to teach Bible, so you got to write messages. Yeah. And yeah, so that really gave me the head start of stage presence, persona, being entertaining and keeping people engaged. So I was funny the first time. Hmm. And man, um, and that was the start. But even then, I still was trying to be somebody youth pastor, move back to Dayton. And um, I think I preached Dang. one time, but I'm like, all of the comedy opportunities is like, they... Here, 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 and I was like, "Well, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this out." Was you, know? you using something? Was you? Was you? Did you find yourself? Because when I when I when I preached, right, mm -hmm. I would incorporate comedy like in my sermons. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Like I, I'm I'm teaching, but I'll use a you know an example or whatever, yeah. and I act goofy or whatever, and people start laughing. Did you ever feel yeah. yourself I'm like be incorporating with you. my first well, like? The first couple years, I would start off with a joke because I still oh, wow. was like relatively nervous a little bit, and that for me like broke the ice for them as well as for me. Nice, yeah. nice, yeah. That's what's up, man. I, I was, I was, uh, you know, we. I know, I know, you got to be a little wore out. You know what I'm saying? We mm -hmm. we did we. So we had my my podcast mm -hmm. launch party yeah. yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which went amazing. It was. It was, it was yeah. freaking amazing, bro. The dope thing about you is you one of them people that people love you. And they rock with you heavy. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people, yeah. they cool, but yeah. you could tell, you could see like the energy, you a good dude, the momentum behind you, people love you and rock with you. And people like that, like y'all got, you know, you got to take advantage of it. Like there are a lot of artists, yeah. entertainers, singer, whatever, people love them. And it's like, yo, listen, this is, these are your, bat. this is a battery. Right, Absolutely. like your fan base is a battery. For and real, you got to know when to drain the battery. Yep. Right, and then some people don't even use the battery. You know what I mean? Like yeah, people want to yeah. support you. Give them a mm. reason. Give them something to support. Dang, you know? that's deep. Yeah, no, for real. That's deep. That's deep. You say like people, people want to support support you. Yeah, but you don't. You won't give them nothing. You not give to them support. nothing too. Yeah. Like they love you enough yeah. to be like, bro, just do something. Right. Like we there for you. Yeah. But I think at the same time, you have to. You have to make sure that you putting out quality. One hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. mugs, listen, it don't. It ain't long. Oh uh, yeah, one, one, be like, one oh. or two times. Yeah, one or two times. Yeah, it's like, one or okay, two times. Yeah, he threw. Yeah. He threw. But you know what though, man? One of the phrases that I used to, I'm making sure I'm putting the good. Right yeah, 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 put, yeah. Okay, okay put it right there. Right. This is brought to you by, yeah. you know, of course, good company apparel. But that's that's later. That's later. So Come when on. I first started, I would go to like these industry panels where it'd be like a person from BT there, an entertainment attorney, and all of that. And one of the phrases that they always like echo was industry standard, right? Mm. So no matter what you're doing, whether it's producing cups like this, yeah. back in the days when we was doing and CDs and DVDs, industry standard was if I purchase, if I'm selling this DVD to somebody, when I look at it from the cover to the artwork, it needs to look like the same type of DVD that's on the shelf on the, the shelf at yeah. Walmart. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because if you charging twenty dollars for this product, well now let's say T-shirts, right? Because we selling T-shirts and different merch. In the, the the quality of the shirt needs to be good. Yeah, you give yeah. away bags, right? So the price that you're asking, the the quality substantiates that. Absolutely. But a lot of people, their quality is not there, and people gonna support you that one time, maybe the second time, maybe. And that third time they done. And then you want to get on Facebook and be like, people don't support. It's like, nah, people support quality. That's what it is. Or good, and, good yes. stuff. Yes, bro. Yeah. Quality and personality, Personality, bro. yeah. Like, I, 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 people have told me, like, bro, I rock good company because of you. Yes, 100%. You know what I'm saying? Because of who you are yeah. and how you treat people, how, mm -hmm. you, how you love people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it, it, it is the it is the quality of yeah. the 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 merchandise. Yes, but definitely you got to have people. Yeah, like bro, people be going into business and they don't have any like social people skill. Skill. People none, skill, yeah, no, none. And it's like, yeah. and, and I'm not mad. I'm not mad at that. Like, if you don't have any personal skills, you got to be smart enough to hire somebody. One hundred percent. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you got to yeah. get a team together who say, listen, where I'm weak at. Yeah. 
I need somebody who's strong in that area yeah. because it's hard to grow a business yes. when you're unlikable. Unlikable, yeah. You know what it is? It's really like, man, I used to work in sales and there was this phrase that we used. It was like being penny wise and dollar foolish, right? Mm. So you lose in dollars. You lose in dollars because let's just say if somebody's like, hey, man, I want to get this shirt and they try to return the shirt and you tripping off of them over $20. And this person may go tell multiple oh people, and you're losing hundreds of thousands all because you want it to be cheap with 20, and oh that's it. Goodness. You know what I mean? Oh so goodness. sometimes you just got to take the L for the greater good. And it goes absolutely. back to that people skills and them social skills. Nah, man. you're absolutely yeah. right, man. I, I try to make sure I give people quality, bro. 100%. You know what I mean? And, yeah. that's, and that's the same with you. Like, man, I, I've never seen you, like, do comedy. Like, I've never seen you do your element. And it was like half butt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you, I don't care how many people, you give it your all every, yeah. every single time. Because I heard, I heard like a a little, a little saying, um, I think a basketball player said it, but he was like, listen, it might have been Kobe. Mm -hmm. Might have been Kobe or somebody like that. But they was like, listen, when when somebody pay for a ticket to Man, come see me, bro, that, yeah, that's it. Bro, somebody pay their hard-earned money, travel yeah. from who knows where? Yeah. To come see me, bro. I'm going to play. Yeah. 100. Like these these kids deserve yeah. to see us. Yeah. Really give them our a all. Game. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I I take that with me, man. Everywhere I go, everything yeah. I do, I want it to be a hundred percent, bro. Mm -hmm. I don't never want to do nothing that's that's halfway done. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't got I don't got time. Yeah. I'm trying to maximize all of my gifts, all yeah. of my talents right now. And, and and so speaking on speaking on other things that you that you was you know, interested in, mm -hmm. bro, criminal justice. Yeah. Scholarship. Did you have a scholarship? Like, yeah, I was on scholarship. For criminal justice? Yeah, I mean, that was my major. That was your major? Yeah. So outside of that, it was, he was like, no, I have to, comedy called you more than. Yeah. Was I it, mean, is it still something you want to do later or is it nah, like? I mean, you know what? When I was a criminal justice, uh, so that was in junior college, I was very idealistic at the time. You know, hmm. I thought that I could, you know, go do prison ministry and change. And then, you know, then I found out, you know, prison is about making money. You know what I mean? Mm. Not rehabilitation. It's not about mm. rehabilitation. Yeah. So that's what kind of just changed me, um, you know, in that regard, man. Um, yeah. And I really didn't have the desire to do it. But I, but I, I spoke to you yesterday. When I get done with comedy, man, I want to be a therapist. You know, like nice. that's really at my heart is, you know, just helping people and taking people by the hand. Yeah. And just having that conversation and walking them through their issues. I mean, I can see you. I can I can see you doing that, too. I can yeah. see you being a therapist, man, and, and really helping people yeah and i know people will come out you know mm -hmm. laughing you know what i mean because you because you naturally funny you gonna yeah. make people laugh now nah, that's that's yeah. that's super dope man yeah. low so 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 check this out so i'm when i was going through uh uh your bio mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i see that you you was hosting comedy shows at the taste in dayton mm -hmm. and and writing for other comedians yeah you know what i mean like how, how'd you get into writing for other comics. I know people was like, man, listen, I'm not half as good as this guy. Yeah. I'm just going to humble myself and ask him to write. Did it, was it like that people was asking you? or Yeah. You know, again, man, it really goes back to like those compartmentalizing moments where I remember one day I was at work and I had to send an email, and I sent out this email. And I don't, I don't know how people view me or whatever, but I sent this email, and it was like, hey, who sent that? You know? Yeah. I did. <laughs> right, right. I've always been nice with words, you right, know? Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, and say, I mean, same thing with you, too. You know, you're Thank a writer, you. so the words are just there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know how to put it together and formulate it. Absolutely. So the first comedian was a, it was a guy out of Tampa, Florida, man. Um, huh. He fellow comedian and was just like, yo, uh, can you put together like a 15 minute set? I was like, yeah, cool. Oh, wow. So I'll write him a new 15, but still not taking it serious. And I think like comedians here and there would come. And this is just me like at that phase where like not knowing, like, not looking at myself as a commodity. I'm okay. like, all right, I'm just give me $150. Got you. Boom. But what really started making me take it serious was this was uh, 2015 when I was on tour with David Mann. Okay. Okay. And, yes. Right. So, um, David Mann at the time is extremely busy. So we know him as hmm. Mr. Brown. Even to this day, man, he stays doing multiple TV shows. He manages his wife, Tamala Mann's career. Mm -hmm. So when we were going on tour, I could tell he wasn't working. 
like on stage in between. Because okay. if we did Friday, Saturday, Sunday, okay, Friday he would be funny, but you could see the rust on him. Mm. Saturday he's knocking the rust off. Sunday he's good. Okay, but his son was like, Dad, you need to have Mark right for you. And he kept saying it like, Dad, you need to have Mark right for you because I'm hosting and I'm blazing that joint like bop bop right. That's crazy. So he was just like, Yeah, I want you to write for me. And I was like, All right, cool. So he flies me to Texas. And we had his crib for like three days, man. And we just writing and writing and writing and writing. And that's when it was like, it clicked. Like, oh, this is this another. This for real. Yeah, this is another stream within comedy. So that's what made me start taking writing serious when you get like a decent check for writing. Absolutely. And I'm like, All Absolutely. I got to do is just look at you and tell. It's like directing. And one of the things that Damon wow. Wayne's told me, he was like, if you could write, you could direct. Because all writing is, is just, I'm going to take you in the direction. It's like you see it. It basically, huh. it is, I told my homeboy this, who's a comedian. I was like, dude, you need to go back and take a language arts class. Because it's not that you can't write. Yeah. You are not grasping, like, basic English. Mm. Right? Because, like, I'm going to be honest with you, dog. What helped me learn to write was reading the Bible. Because wow. the Bible... Is written in old English, yeah. right? And yeah. when you think about English, it really has a beat. When like literature has a beat, mm. right? Mm. Like if you you know, hence, therefore, and forevermore, comma. Yeah, yeah. And that gives you the rhythm. It's a structure for it's sure. It's a structure, absolutely. Right. And reading really just gives you that structure. That's what gave it to me. So right. So mm. now that I understand the English language, That's now deep. I can write. Oh my god. But goodness. a lot of people, you don't know the structure of English. So if you're writing for somebody, like if you're telling a joke, right? The timing. Which I did, you know what I'm saying? Right. Which I did. Right. <laughs> but as a comic, though, as a comic, right? <laughs> it's a beat to it. And if this beat is getting too long, I'm like, you should already be out of that joke right now. Mm. I don't even got to say it. It's, it's just in my head, right? Mm. And that's how it is with writing, man. Like, it, it should be uh, it should be measured, yeah. it should be sharp. You should get in, get out. One of the things in comedy, that we use is a term called laughs per LPM, laughs per minute. Okay. It should be a laugh every 8 to 15 seconds. Oh, wow. And if it's not 8 to 15 seconds, it could be because you, you're using too many words. Again, back huh. to the whole literature thing, huh. right? Like, if it's too many words in the story, by the time we get to the end of the story, we're like, bro, we could be here 10 minutes ago. Got you. Right? So that's Got you. The, some of the things about writing is just taking out all the unnecessary words and just let's get to the point yo so shout out to la roses man listen one of my favorite pizza joints in the whole world listen you can download their new app it's easy it's fast it's convenient you can reorder your favorites with just a tap they got over 40 menu selections i'm talking about you can order so many things you got pizza you got calzones real family recipes they stuff tastes really really good y'all it's something for everyone all available for dining in pick up or delivery. Listen, to order, I need you to use the app or you can call 513-347-1111. You got a deal going on. You can buy any large pizza and get two calzones for just $9.99. Mention the mix and match. Get some La Rosas in your life. 513-347-1111. Get some La Rosas right now. Right. You got you. Straight line. So so listen, I learned I learned a lot. Yeah. I learned a lot from watching you yeah. at my my podcast mm -hmm. um comedy show, right? Mm -hmm. So I that that's been a whole like goal of mine mm -hmm. is to do stand up. Yeah. And not as a career. Like no, I'm not I trying to I'm that. not trying to yeah, do it yeah, as a yeah. career. Bucket list. It was only the bucket it was, list. It was definitely a bucket list. I I thought I was funny. Me and my wife talk about it all the time. She'd be like, I'm funny in small circles. Yeah. And I'd be like, I feel that way too. Like yeah. I, I'm funny in small circles. But I was like, man, maybe I can write something. Mm -hmm. And it's so crazy. Like some years ago, man, I wrote a whole yeah. I wrote like a whole two page bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm gonna do this one day, yeah. man. You know, and this 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 week this past weekend was a was a perfect opportunity for me yeah. to try. So, one hundred being one hundred with me, yeah, right here. How how was my opening for? Because I, I had the honor, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something yeah. I'll probably never do again, mm -hmm. but to open for you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and do my thing. So g come on, give it to me. Here's give it to thing. me. Give it to me raw. It what, was, what was my bad. What was my good? Here's what the I? thing. It was good. We're going to edit all the bad stuff out. <laughs> gonna, you hear that? We're going right. to edit everything No, right here's out. the thing. It was good. But one of the things comedian Godfrey says, if you've been doing comedy two years, you're a two-year-old, right? So from that perspective, absolutely. 
there's no like it's no pressure. I ain't did it enough. Yeah, right. you ain't did it enough, right. right? Right. So no, you were funny. It was just the same. Listen, you let me tell you. Let me tell you what your problem Come was. On. Come on, I want to hear. Same it. thing that I had when I first started. Okay. Because you are a preacher at your heart. Yes. Right. <laughs> so as a preacher, you are used to <laughs> a setup where you're cl- painting a clear picture. Yes. Right. So you yes. stayed in the joints okay. too long. Okay. Like I, I was watching a preacher tell jokes. Okay. Not a comedian. I got you. And the same thing with me, dude. I have my first set on DVD, bro. My setup was like three minutes, <laughs> and I know people's like, I'm hanging on because I rock with you, but yeah, uh, what are we doing? Bro, right. Do no. It, bro. So no, it was funny. It was just everybody who starts off. The setups are lengthy because you don't know. You, you, I need to cut the fat. That's the term. Like, to cut all the stuff that don't need to be there. And you had some big mm. laughs, though, right? You had the, the joint at the end yeah. when you did the song, talking about your parents. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. it was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My mom smoking. Yeah, that yeah, was, yeah. I, bro, I can relate to that. I remember 88, my mom <laughs> sending me to the store to get cigarettes. And bro, I'm like... You ever had to write the note? The note, She had yo, to write the note for you. The like, note. Take yes. this to the store, baby. The note. Yeah, yeah. If that happened today, all of us going to jail. Yeah, I, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You don't write no note. Yeah. Get no damn. And remember the machine that you put the money in and you pulled oh, the, you pulled the joint and they they felt like it was a slot machine oh in Vegas. The one joint. Yeah. Bro, I forgot all about yeah. the machine. My bro. mom's cigarettes was cool 100s. Bro, Benson and Hedges menthol light. Benson bro. and Hedges is old school. Dog. Kept them in the freezer. Old school. Yeah. When you said that, no, I that was, was like, real, that bro. was very. Nuance to black culture, cause we do we put batteries in the freezer, <laughs> cigarettes in the freezer. freezer like, what is prolong, this doing? It can make anything. Yeah. And and so that remi- that that kind of that kind of makes me think about. So my wife always talk about, like she's a like water. I don't, mm-hmm. bro. Listen, I don't. If you got AIDS, my wife be like, Did you drink some water? Oh yeah. Water. Yeah. She feel like water is the cure for freaking everything. I'm like, babe, water. Yeah. Water's not gonna do it this time. Yeah. Water, his, his arm is dis- decapitated. It's like yeah. water's not gonna do it. But everything about water, but freezer, bro, freezing everything is like black moms is so funny. Cause they got the God given intuition and then they got what makes sense to them. And sometimes it's <laughs> intermingled. You like, yo, you don't know everything, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh uh yeah, I, I can vividly remember my mom asking me to get yeah. cigarettes out the freezer, bro. Asking my homies to go to the store for yeah. writing a note to get some to get some Dude, cigarettes. What's crazy is, man. You know, I'm glad that I'm blessed to be in a position. That my kids don't have to go through stuff, but dude, you talking about going to get cigarettes? This is no lie, dog. Absolutely. We moved to Dayton from St. Louis in '86, right? Okay. My mom gets cancer in '86, '87. Mm. So '88. 89, I'm probably like nine years old, right? My mom was like, listen, we're going downtown to get my medicine, okay? And we're going to catch the bus. Hmm. And I'm going to do it one time with you. After this, you you on your this own. This your job, my brother. Damn, <laughs> I'm nine years old on the city bus with the adults, yo. I have 30 cents. <laughs> That's bus fare, 30 cents back in the day, God right? Please. 30 cents to get back to the crib, dog. And I remember going before it was CVS, remember it was Refco, right? Going to Refco, Dang, Refco to get my mom's medicine, dog, back in the day. Yo, that is wild. It bro. is wild. That is man. wild how they used to send us. And it was uh, on but missions. It, but, it, but it made it, but, but it what's made so it crazy, strong. bro, is it made it okay because you had a note from you, her. You bro. had a note, dog. The note was like, yeah. Bro, I kind of think that was irresponsible yeah. of the stories, yeah, bro. Listen, and the crazy thing is, man, both my my children have never been on the city bus a day in their life. 13 and 11. Look, he sucked his teeth. Listen, nah, yeah, yeah. N- not only had they been on the city bus, <laughs> listen, let me tell you what my son said to me. Let me tell you what this dude said. He said, Daddy, mommy told me that you lived in a neighborhood where people sold drugs. Why would you live in a place like that? <laughs> like I had a choice. You think? I was like, so they don't t- you don't know how poverty works? Like, <laughs> poverty works like this is what you can afford. You live right here. It this don't matter it. what they doing. This is it, that's bro. That's where you stay at. This is it, bro. Yeah. That is funny, man. So, so. He said, why would you live in a place like that? I was like, wow. Like, yeah, like, like, yeah, you had a choice. Yeah, I'm like, you, you got it too good. If if you, you, like, let me ask you why you live. Like, you, you can't move out. Yeah. What nah, you gonna do? Uh-uh. Nah, that's hilarious, bro. So. I got a question. Okay. So, do you remember the time that you got paid for your first I gig, do. bro? And like when you got paid for your first, I, bro, I can remember. I can remember when I was really out here rapping. Yeah. 
and you know you you on a free bus yeah for a long time yeah. bro you just you just so happy mm -hmm. to go out and, and do what you do you know what i'm saying i remember the first time i got paid bro i couldn't believe it i'm like man these people really paid me they they offered to pay me mm -hmm. to come out you yeah. know I, I didn't went out and did some shows here and, there, and i'm just like oh my goodness these people just actually booked me bro yeah so like how did that the, the first time the first time you got paid do you remember where was that? I do. And how, and how did it make you feel? Man, I remember the question, right? First, let's start at the question. So, again, I'm doing comedy maybe about a year, year and a half. Okay. And one of my uh, friends, she, she she was a life coach at the time, and she was having this, like, lock-in for all of her clients. And she was like, I want you to come maybe about 10 p.m. and tell some jokes. I'm like, all right, cool. And she was like, so how much you charge? I was like, yeah. <laughs> uh... Man, yeah, I've never been asked that. Let me let me get back with you. So this, hold on, you say almost two years you've been... Uh, no, it wasn't two. So I started in 06 when I was in college. So this is probably like 06, early 07. So you was about a year in? Yeah. About a year in? Yeah. Before you... Okay. Yeah. And um, wow. Yeah. And I was like, I, I don't know. She was like, I'm going to just give you $75. And I was like, okay. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> what you talking $75, dude. I wasn't even thinking about getting money. I was just trying to be funny for real. Yeah. Ah, bro, that's crazy, yeah. bro. $75, bro. Yeah. Like, did you feel like, did that motivate you to be like, oh, this, this, they paying me? No, not really. I was just, because like early on, you know, like some of the older comedians just told me like, don't focus on the money. Like, focus on getting better. And if you get better, the money will come. Mm. You know, and I had a day job at the time. So yeah. I wasn't like, I, I never believed in the starving artist lifestyle. Like, I never was with... You know, I'm gonna just chase my career and just nah, yeah, nah. Yeah. It's a lifestyle that I want to live. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, I'm gonna get a job because there's so many like expenses that that did that, that, that occur that you have to have a gig like headshots. You got to go to showcases all across the country. You got to pay for hotels, Absolutely. flights, and you have to have a job. So my focus really was never the money. I just wanted to get better. Bro, I had I bro when I was when I was I got married in 2005. Okay. Right. I was rapping before then, okay. okay, but I hadn't, I wasn't really, like, traveling. Yeah. Like, it seemed like as soon as I got married, like, shortly after that, I started getting booked, and I was like, listen, bro, I got a whole wife and yeah. kids. I'm, I'm not going nowhere. Yeah, you need that. If y'all ain't paying me something, 100%, bro, like, no. I have to, I have to make some type of money yeah. to, to, to maintain, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This lifestyle, and I was working two jobs. You know what? I always yeah. thought out like that, bro. You always working like mm -hmm. a, a slave for somebody mm -hmm. else. Then you, this is, a, this is your side gig mm -hmm. for right now. You know what I mean? But yeah. so how did you balance how did you balance that, bro? I know it was, was Dude, it exhausting? I mean, it? I, no, exhausting is an understatement, man. I mean, like, it was, so, I, this is, what, I'm going to tell you what made me start taking comedy serious. It was 2011. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this comedy show in Chicago. Okay. I'm working this comedy club, black-owned comedy club called Jokes and Notes. And I was featuring, I'm doing 15 minutes, and they let a dude do a guest spot. Hmm. And the guest spot was only five minutes. So okay. My man goes up and does five minutes and hit so hard, mm. I couldn't follow him. Like, as an artist, you know, right? So let's say you rapping, and they throw up Buster Rhymes oh before goodness. you, and Buster got crazy energy. Oh, my goodness. And you doing your thing, but the crowd could tell the difference, and you could tell. And I was just like, yeah, I need to start coming to Chicago more. So from 2011 to 16, my boy lived in the South Suburbs. His name was Comedian Tony K. Okay. He lived in the South Suburbs. He gave me a key to his apartment, and he was like, yo, whenever you want to come up here, just come up here, because the Chicago comedy scene was so competitive. Like, it makes you stronger. Huh. So I was up there so much, people thought I lived in Chicago. Oh, I would wow. just hit people up, like, yo, let me get on your show and just do shows. I would go on, like, let's say Friday after yeah. work, do two shows Friday, one Saturday, and come back on Sunday. And it made me stronger, though. Huh. So, so yeah, the grind was serious, dude. I mean, there's been plenty of times where... I'm going to tell you one story. So you mentioned taste, okay? This epitomizes the grind. Okay, right? okay. So this is uh, 2013, I believe. I get off work at... Um, you know, I, have, I worked from 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. to noon. Okay. At noon, I drive all the way to Chicago. My boy rode with me, right? So I drive to Chicago, do a showcase for TBS. Okay. We get done maybe 8 o'clock, which is 9 o'clock our time. Drive back. I don't sleep at all in the car. I think I sleep one hour. Goodness. Right? So then this is Thursday. 
Thursday, I work a full day, and I'm supposed to host this show at Taste, right? It's the monthly show that I host. I was like, I'm just going to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> so, like an idiot, I turned my phone off and set my alarm clock. And man, when the body is tired, the body like, oh, you ain't gonna give me no rest? Cool. I'm we just gonna shut yeah, we all systems down. We down. shutting down, bro. So listen, dude, the show is supposed to start at like eight o'clock. At nine o'clock, somebody's banging on my door. Dude, you know when you late for work, work is the first thing on your mind when you get up. Absolutely. No, this is how tired I was. When I woke up and I heard somebody banging, I'm like, yo, somebody trying to rob me. Oh my God. So I go in the kitchen, grab a oh. knife. <laughs> And I get, wait, wait, wait. I swear to God, though, I grab a knife and a baseball bat. I got a knife in this hand and a bat in this hand, right? So, <laughs> so I go to the door. I'm like, who is it? <laughs> my sister says her name. She was like, it's Marjorie. I, it's still not registered. Oh, my God, I, I, bro. Dude, I'm not lying. This is how tired I am. I say, what you want? <laughs> <laughs> and my boy, they think I'm dead because I wake up to my phone. Voicemail full, mad text messages. Oh so God, this is bro. when it clicked that I'm late for work. She said, uh, your show started an hour oh ago. I said, God. oh, snap, you're right. I'm supposed to be on stage. So, dude, that was like the hustle and the grind. Oh, my God, yeah. bro. But look, though, this one thing that I guarantee you don't remember this, though. I remember when you went full time as a rapper, right? Because I remember just being a comedian and I'm seeing other dudes jump off the porch, leaving a job. And, like, you was the first guy that I knew and was cool with. I was like, oh, snap, this is attainable, okay? Listen. And I asked you a question. I'll never forget this. I was like, yo, how did you know that it was time for you to leave? And you said, when comedy provides at least 75% of your income mm. and it's interfering with your gigs, it's Ooh. time to leave. i never forget that, dog. i never forget. So then 2014 comes. I, and I'm at that place. You know how, do you know how much, listen, hold on, first of all. Do you know how much work you have to put, put in, in oh, listen. before the amount of money you making mm -hmm. doing what you want to do, mm -hmm. like, yeah, allows you, bro, like, yeah. You t I don't like it has to be another word for exhaust. It has Ex to be something yeah, else, bro. It's exhausting, like exhausting, man. Zombie. Like, yes. bro, you in a zombie mode. Yeah. When you are working two jobs yeah, dog. just to make one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Start providing yeah, enough, enough where you're able to leave yeah. it, bro. Yeah. Yeah, man. Bro. It's I mean, dude, listen, it's many miles on a car. It's I mean, it's just being okay with not sleeping. It's hustling. It's networking. Yeah. Like one guy. He had, I mean, the, the clean scene in Chicago, he had it on lock. This is no lie, dude. I, so one day I was on Facebook, and I saw this ad, Christian Comedy Network, hmm. right? So I called him. Me and this dude talked on the phone for maybe five months before he put me on his first show. Wow. And that's that because he knew what he had to offer, right? You know Absolutely. what I mean? It's like, I'm the plug. I ain't about to just bring anybody up. Right. Yeah. And, man, that dude introduced me to the Chicago comedy scene. This is the same dude who gave me a key to his apartment. Mm. And it's just like that determination. You know, people will rock with you and, and bless you in so many ways, but you really got to have that go get it. Bro, you have yeah, you have to show them. Yeah. You have to show people, mm -hmm. like, listen, yeah. I'm out here. Right. You but then the other side of it is this, though, man. Once you do decide to take that step mm -hmm. and leave your job, man, one of the things I always tell people is, like, when you look at the, like, history of the Bible, God yeah. always honors sacrifice. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So, listen, you can't have one foot in the comfort zone and the other foot on your dream, right? No matter what, you take that leap, God is going to honor you, right? I'm not saying be foolish. Because, Count the cost. Come on now. Count the cost. Listen, if if you if whatever you want to do, <laughs> Please. If, if you're making 1500 a year, it's not time for you to leave. Right? Absolutely. And you can't be idealistic and think just I'm going to be full time. Nah. Hold on. Stop. Hold on. Let me just say that you can't listen. If it ain't there, it's not there. Faith, bro. People, yeah. I think they get this thing mixed mm -hmm. up. Like, I'm just going to step out on faith. Nah, nah, mm -hmm. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. There is a, a, a there is a time you have to count the yeah. we I step out on faith when God tell me to do yeah. something. I have to have faith that he's going to provide right. the freaking way. Right? right? Sometimes we'll just I, we'll just jump off the roof and yeah. be like I got faith that the nah. plane going to get built before nah. I land. It's like Nah, you that's yeah. you, bro. Like right. you did that. Don't right. don't just do stuff yeah. and then and then have to make God 
come through and come rescue. through when he yeah. didn't tell you. You know what I yeah. mean? When you just doing stuff, man. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you yeah, yeah. absolutely. It, it has bro. to be an element of practicality. Like, yeah, am I making money in this? Please. If I'm not making money from it now, it's not gonna happen. Bro. So for me, I could have left my job in 2013, but I was fearful. So anyway, just talking about how God honors sacrifices, man, and has always looked out for me. Mm. So um, I did this gig, this is like 2014, mm. Thanksgiving 2014, when I'm scared to charge a good amount of money. So this yeah. guy reached out to me in like uh, San Francisco. Okay. His name was Barry Armstrong. He had Armstrong Painting Company. Huh. So he was like, hey, I want you to entertain my employees and my family for Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. So he flies me all the way to San Francisco, right? And I only hit him for, it was nothing for real. Right. Maybe 700. Okay. Right? Because okay. I, I didn't want to lose the gig. Right, right, right. right. So um, I do the gig. And afterwards, he was like, you know what, dude? Since you came out here on a holiday, I'm going to give you an extra 700. Cool. Right? Had a good time. So then come back to Dayton that Saturday. No, no, Black Friday. That Saturday, I fly to Tampa, right? Get to Tampa, do the gig, and the promoter, it was at a church. The promoter pulls all, he waits to perform, and he pulls all of the talent in the pastor's office and was like, hey, man, uh, <laughs> I, I just want to let you know that, um, I uh and he starts crying. Oh like, my god! I, I don't have all of your oh. money. No, not all. He don't. He doesn't have any of my bread. But guess how much he owed me? Seven hundred dollars. Oh my goodness! The seven hundred that my man had already paid me right in advance. You know what I mean? So the other comedians was mad at him. They wanted to fight him. But I was like, it's, it would be wrong for me to be mad because my man had already gave me yeah. that portion. That's what I'm saying. Like when you are supposed to be doing this thing, right, that God calls you to do, yeah. he has to look out for you. It's not an option. He yeah, has to. Yeah, yeah, because he, I always say this, like, bro, God is not going to let me outdo him as a parent. Facts. He's, yes, listen, it's common sense. If, I, if, if I'm doing whatever I got to do to take care of my family, yeah. bro, and, and take care of my kid, my wife and kids, yeah, and I'm his child, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, he's he's not going to, he's not going to let me outdo him. Yeah. He's not He's not gonna let me out do him as a as a parent. So yeah. that's that I think that's what kind of keep me cool. You know what I'm saying? Even mm -hmm. in the midst of when, when things is going crazy and you know, I don't know how blah blah blah. It's just like, hold up. Yeah. Like I know I'm gonna take care of my kids. Yeah, and you just gotta think about all the other times. If he looked out all for me here, 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 yeah, he's gonna do it this time. So so speaking so speaking of that, okay. I, I, we got it, we got a you know, a segment. You know okay. what I'm saying? We're gonna go into this this first segment. First segment. It's called Tell Me Something Good. Okay, so tell me about a time, bro, where you took a negative situation and turned it into a positive situation. Whatever that, whatever that may be, something that that happened to you that was crazy, and you just turned it into something good. I, and I, and I, and I so I got these T-shirts printed, mm -hmm. right, and. I told my my screen printer, this is the color, this is the color I want, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. This was right before we opened up our location at Kenwood. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, I, I need this color. You know, told him the colors and everything. He sent me, he sent me the the mock-up. Mm -hmm. I okayed the mock-up. I'm like, yes, that's the right color. Bro, printed these tees, and it was so similar to a shirt that I was already selling. So I couldn't sell that shirt because it just had like one color change mm -hmm. it was too it was too it was almost like having a uh like a, like a white and black t-shirt mm -hmm. and a white and smoke gray t-shirt it's like they're too close yeah to, to, i wanted something totally separate so i got these t-shirts bro and i was so upset that i had because it was my fault yeah so before i opened the the location in kenwood i was like you know what i'm gonna do I'm gonna do a buy one, give one free. Okay. Right? So as my for my grand opening. Yeah. So had all these t-shirts, and I was like, I can't let them go to waste. Yeah. And I can't wait till I sell all these other ones first, then come right back around with the same exact color scheme. Mm -hmm. So I, I did a buy one, give one. And man, mm -hmm. like when I tell you we sold out of those, I had like 80 of them printed. Yeah. We sold out with like in the first two hours because people was trying to come and get the buy one give one okay you know what i mean so yeah. 
you, man, like any anything in, in life challenge, you don't have to be, you know, related yeah. to your occupation, but yeah. is there a time you it was a bad situation and you turned it into something good, man? Yeah, man. I mean, honestly, dude, that was like my middle school years. Mm. You know what I mean? So when I was in middle school, um, I didn't know I was like really angry at my pops for real. Wow. You know what I mean? Like I had a lot of anger towards him and that was the source of my deviant behavior. When I was in middle school, dude, I failed seventh grade. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how how real we could be. Oh no, this okay. is the, yeah. I mean, I dro I dropped out in eleven, okay. so I was yeah, so, I was tripping. When I was in seventh grade, I told my teacher to lick my balls, yo. Really? Because I could not stand a very condescending lady, and I said that, and she hold on, hold on, <laughs> <laughs> bro. What was her reaction, bro? She just stared at me like, and she picked up the phone. Oh my god! She was like a cluster leader. Picked up the phone and was like, "Your son." <laughs> Told me, me to, to lick, lick his the, balls, lick the sweat. Remember CB4? His, right. Remember CB4? You, <laughs> right, the sweat for my balls, right? Hey, and I stuck the landing on the balls too. I was like, you know what? You can lick my balls. Oh my God. So she bro. called my mom in the classroom, and it was like close to the end of school year. You you get suspended in the school year, and you already not doing good. You out of here, fam. Fail seventh grade, you know? So. Listen. My, oh my God, bro! I can see that. Oh uh, yeah, I wasn't playing. I was like, I'm a, I can see that, bro. Yeah. But I can imagine all the kids like in the class, hey, like. But you know, it's like, oh, <laughs> this is crazy. right. But she got she got her lick back with the you failed. I was like, you ain't had. Come on, fam. You, you ain't, ain't had to fail me. Bro. You ain't had to up the heady like that. Oh my but yeah, God. So, so I mean, man, my middle school years, dude. I mean, man, my first seventh grade year. That was my first seventh grade year. <laughs> Dude, that year I got subpoenaed to go to court because I seen somebody get the dude shot a dude in front of me. So I mean, and man, I'm just living. Uh, it, it was just wild, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the neighborhood yeah. I was in was wild, bro. You remember what the '90s was like? Crack everywhere. No, absolutely. And I'm literally legitimately headed down the wrong path. But what did it for me, man? I, I say like, Jesus saved my soul, but sports saved my life. Mm. The first time I ran track. I was like, this time I'm going to go to college. Mm. So once I got out of middle school, I went to high school. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, none of these teachers know me for being bad. So once I went to high school, dude, no suspension. No, I ain't tell nobody to lick my balls. Good grades. <laughs> you, you ain't say that. You ain't yeah, to say that I, no more. <laughs> I, I was good, you know. So I, that's so to answer your question, like for me, that was it, man. Turning that like just crazy situation into something positive, man. Yeah. yeah. Nah, that's dope, man. That's dope, bro. Like I said, I, I dropped that, man. I was... Yeah, man, high school, I I really didn't like it, bro. Yeah. I really didn't, because I, I felt like I wasn't really learning nothing. You know what but I'm saying? But you know, I think, but here's the thing, though, dude. So I teach this comedy and writing workshop, and one of the things that I talk about is, like, your writing has to coincide with your learning style, right? And I think that's what happens. Hmm. So obviously, you are creative. Yeah, right. definitely. School, traditional school is very linear. Yes. We teach this way. If you don't learn this way, you gonna get it. you're not going to get it, Oof. right? So most creatives are like, you know, kinesthetic learners, right? Which yep. is energy and movement. Yep. And Absolutely. you are a very energetic dude. I am. Right? So for me, school was a struggle. And I think that's what happens, man. You know, it's it's not set up for a lot of, you know, people who are creative to win. What you, what, what, well, like, what, what made you, what made you say, you, like, you know what? I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach comedy. I'm going to do these comedy classes because I kind of do something mm -hmm. like that where I teach on branding and marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? And, yeah. I, and, and I just learned to have a passion for mm -hmm. marketing. Like, I'm always talking about mm -hmm. marketing. Somebody come up to me and ask me something about marketing. Same, like, that is my reason. strong part. Yes, same reason. I was that dude where just, you know, writing being one of my strengths, comedians would get off stage and be like, yo, when you do that joke, next time say this, this, and this. And they'd be like, yo, when I did it, it worked. Mm. Or, you know, so, and comedians just coming up to me asking, and one of my homegirls was like, you need to teach a class. This was like wow. 2017. Wow. But I felt like I hadn't accomplished enough. Okay. And I, it was just fear, you know, or worried about what people would think. So anyway, man, I just mm. was like, you know what, let's throw it out the window, let's teach a class. And I'm glad I did it because what I found was, it was so many comedians that were doing comedy but didn't know the basics. Like the basic huh. verbiage, the terminologies. And it's like, yo, you good at this, but you have no structural framework. Like uh. you don't understand or don't know the basics. So you really yeah. like operating off talent and a little bit of framework. And then so I taught the class for like five, six months. And then we did a, a, a workshop at the Funny Bone. Okay. And it, it was dope. But you know what, man? 
that I found was so rewarding just to like pour in the people. Pour in, man, that's the, oh that's my the goodness, part. bro. I love giving yeah. back and and sharing my knowledge, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, on, on things that I've learned and so I can fast track somebody else. So yeah. they don't have to bump their head like the right, way I bump man. my head, bro. Yeah. Dude, we, don't have, we don't have a lot of that, man. We have a whole lot of people who who, who, who get this knowledge and they get these, these connections yeah. and it's like, it's like yeah. I'm keeping this all Hold, for me. I, I, yeah. yeah, I ain't gonna let y'all know nothing. Yeah. You know, if you don't pay me, you, you know, we ain't playing. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's yeah. like some yeah. stuff, bro, you gotta be able to, you gotta be able to give back, yeah. man. You gotta right. be able to, 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 to help other right. people, you know, get to where you are, bro. Right. I'm a strong yeah. believer in that. Nah, 100%, man. And you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I remember one time, like I was kind of getting frustrated mm -hmm. because I was like, man, I'm putting so many comedians on. This is before I talked to class. I'm like, I'm throwing cats work and certain cats not throwing it back. But then I had to look at myself like, yo, I'm the faucet, right? Wow. The water run through me. Wow. So if the water run through me, I'm going to get wet. But it don't. Re it doesn't matter yeah. if cats throw something back. I'm going to stay wet because um, yeah, I'm... Uh, pause. <laughs> <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. I was, hey, you know when you thought you had a, some point? No, I'm playing. Like, but no. On, bro. <laughs> yeah, but no, that's that's really what it was, though. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I'm going to continue to be blessed because it, it flowed through me. Could, and I can throw it out, bro. You can do it. Boom. Yeah, there we go. Absolutely. No, nah, that's dope, man. What What do you think about like these days? Okay, here we go. Let's take, so you know it's serious. You gotta take a sip. Like you kind of gotta be a little careful. Mm -hmm. Like what do you like? What do you like? How do you feel about the comedy scene today, bro? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I know comedy at a time it was it was something that you can really express yourself how you yeah. want to. You could really kind of mm -hmm. go in on, you know, different subjects and stuff yeah. like that. But now everything is like cancel, mm -hmm. cancel culture. Like it, it don't seem like you have to really deal with that because mm -hmm. of the type of comedy you do. But mm -hmm. either speaking for yourself or even even other comics, like how do you feel about the comedic scene right now? Um, I mean, so I do feel like it is frustrating mm. to see a comedian or a joke says this and people are so hypersensitive <sighs> and uh, and what they're saying is this but your hypersensitivity took it in a whole nother direction and it's like yo Correct. my man well, that's not even what he's saying and it's so frustrating i really feel like man i want to get back to the place where nobody had an opinion mm. you know what i mean except the experts like mm. that's who i want to hear from mm. not i jump on social media mm. and you got a a a, a a 12 minute think piece on what somebody said and it's not based in facts it's just all your opinion you know what i mean so yeah. people just super sensitive but for me i'm gonna be honest with you i try to like to me i look at stuff as a challenge right hmm. so if there's a dude in a wheelchair in the audience that's the guy that you shouldn't joke on but in my head yeah. i'm gonna be like i'm gonna find a way to hit him with a joke he laughs and everybody else laughs and nobody's offended yeah and i think that's the the yeah. part where, like, I look at it like I'm gonna be a sniper. I'm gonna hit you, and before you know you hit, you laughing, bro. That's, bro. But that's, it's like that's crafty. some type of talent. That's some yeah. type of talent, bro. That you yeah. gotta have to be able to still joke on somebody yeah. who's, you know, what I'm saying maybe yeah. handicapped. It just, right. it took me back to uh, the um, the clumps, mm -hmm. bro. When uh, when um. Your boy was on stage, yeah. And he was, and, but he kind of reversed it. He like yeah, he, he laughing did. so hard. Mm -hmm. He like, you know. But it's like comedy, man. It, it was it was a time where you could say whatever yeah. you wanted to say, bro, and nobody was. And I, and I still think it wasn't you, social media, bro. It wasn't I think social that's media, what it yeah, did. That's the yeah. Thing that killed everything, right? Yeah, because it would just be word of mouth, like, yo, you won't, you can't believe what so and so said. But yeah. here again, though, okay. So I give you an example. So I was I was at uh, the Dayton Funny Bone one day. I'm on stage performing. Okay. And it's this lady. She's in a wheelchair. And she's stage right. Mm. And she keeps talking. Mm. And mm. I was like, hey, yo, <laughs> relax, though. <laughs> right? And she <laughs> was like, I said, hey, ma'am, I need you to chill out. She was like, I heard you. I'm in a wheelchair. I said, I ain't talking about them little dead legs. <laughs> I said, your legs may not work, but your ears do. And that's what I'm speaking to, all right? So be quiet. <laughs> oh, my so look, God, bro. That was the opportunity oh. for me to hit her and say what I wanted to say <laughs> because, but see, here's You brought a, that on yourself. Yeah, you brought it on that's yourself. That's what I'm saying. And the crowd is like, yeah, he can get you because yeah. you're being disrespectful. <laughs> now, if he just hit you out of nowhere, out of nowhere yeah, yeah. they'd be like, oh, he but wrong. no, you was violating, so you, get that. You brought that Eat on that. yourself. Yeah. 
That's crazy. Hey, yo, shout out to London's Hair Food, man. Listen, this girl got the best hair food in the whole world. Listen, their mission is to provide the textured hair community, come on, that's people of color, somebody, with products that their hair will love while embracing natural beauty. Do you hear me? London's Hair Food is a handcrafted hair care line located right here in Cincinnati. She says, listen, our products are based on porosity level rather than curl pattern to give a more tailored experience. We use exotic, raw, and naturally derived ingredients so that you can be confident that you have the very best. Listen, they got a deal going on. I need y'all to take advantage of this deal. You need to hit up their website. It's, it's look, free shipping on all orders. Free to me, F-R-E-E, -E, the number two, M-E. The website is www.londonshairfood.com. That's www.londonshairfood.com. Shout out to London's Hair Food, man, making everybody hair look good. Hey, yo, so, so look, we got, we got, I want to, I want to go into this segment, bro. Um, it's, it's, it's called, uh, Would You Rather? Would you rather? Okay. Okay. Would you rather? Would you rather lose your sight? Ooh. Or your taste? And why? Man, I need, I need my sight. <laughs> You need your... I need my sight. You need your sight. Yeah. What's the purpose of I being think, fly if I can't see how I fly I am? See. What? Bro, no, so, no, so, no, no. bro, so you would be okay not tasting nothing? Bro, did you have you... Did you get COVID? No. Bro, I... Oh, my God, bro. You are like an angel. I got COVID, right? This is how I knew I had COVID, bro. So my wife, when she get out of the shower, she always put on all this smell good stuff, right? I'm still asleep. Mm -hmm. But I can smell her when she get out of the shower, right? So she get out of the shower... And one morning, I ain't smell nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm, I'm probably, okay, I ain't, must be, she probably ain't put nothing on. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. So I get up after she leave, I get in the shower, I put on my cologne, you know, I'm getting dressed, put on my cologne, put on my cologne, I don't, I don't smell it. And like, this cologne is mm -hmm. distinct, bro. Mm -hmm. Put on a cologne, I'm spraying it, don't smell it. So I'm like, what the heck? So then I sprayed it, I sprayed it in the air and sniffed real hard. Yeah. And my nose just burned, bro, from the alcohol that's in the cologne. But I still didn't smell it. So I'm still okay. like, ah, I don't think I got it. Yeah. I don't think I got it. I'm playing myself at this point, right? So I go to work. I come home. She makes some spaghetti. That is one of my favorite dishes, is mm -hmm. spaghetti. So season good, like, like normal, cheese on it. Bro, I taste the spaghetti like. What did it taste like? It was no taste? It was bland? It was no freaking taste, bro. It was, it was, listen, lightweight depressed. Okay. Lightweight depressed. Because then, because then, so then I, I get my my water, and we got these little sugar packets that we always put, like the little, uh, mm -hmm. the peach watermelon is the best. Yeah. What, you know, from, so put that in there, shake it up, drink. I'm like, this tastes just like water, bro. It's like, it's no, I was like, oh yeah, I got COVID, bro. Yeah. I'm talking about depressed, bro, not being able to taste. So you saying yes. you would rather lose your taste. But think about this, dog. Think about if you if you are blind, your wife got to lead you around everywhere. She's not trying to do that. And just think that one argument you get into, she pushes you down the steps, okay? <laughs> you a burden on everybody. You know how hard it is to cross the street? Now that you, and then, okay, imagine having to learn how to read Braille in your 40s. Dog, you're not trying to do that. Nah, you're right. Yeah, no. Nah. I think no now look, let me let me ask you this. I asked somebody at the mall, it was an older guy, mm -hmm. right? And he was like, uh, I was like, what would you what, how old was he? He was like six, he was in his sixties, yeah. like late sixties, maybe. Cool, cool cat though, like yeah. slick, dress nice, yeah, all that, right? He was like, uh, it's like, what would you rather lose? Your 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 sight or your taste? He was like, uh, he was like, shoot, man, listen, let me tell you, man, uh, I'd rather go ahead and lose my sight. I was like, your sight? Yeah, man, I, you know, I need to eat, brother. I done seen everything. I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. He was like, I think if I was a little bit younger, yeah. I would need my sight. He That's was why like, I asked how old was But I done seen everything. Yeah. He was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, keep. Yeah. I need to eat good. Yeah, if I, yeah, I sit down somewhere and just nah, eat, listen uh -uh. to the game. I was like, no. oh, okay. Dude, imagine you can't see, right? And you and walk. And I'm in fashion, bro. Yeah, yeah. nah. Uh-uh. Because, listen, at this point, they will, take my taste. they will be putting out some trash apparel. Oh, my God, But bro. think about this, dog. Think about if a dog starts chasing you. 
you don't, you just getting bit immediately because you don't even know the dog is coming. Yeah, yeah, you through. Yeah. You through. You, now, being young, I think I definitely need my sight, bro. Yeah. I got to be able to see. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So would you rather? Okay. Would you rather fight John Bones Jones? Ooh, okay. Or drink an eight-ounce glass of vomit? Ooh. Would you rather fight John Bones Jones, UFC match, or drink an eight-ounce glass? How many ounces is That's this? That's 20. So about half that. Close to half that. Vomit. We don't know whose vomit it is. It's vomit, though. It's real vomit. I'm going to fight him. <laughs> Bro, you hey. said that so quick. John Bones Jones, bro, you fighting John? Oh, I, I have a strategy. <laughs> it, it's, it, bro. It's not going to be a fight. Bro, I'm talking listen, about no, no UFC, bro. No, you in the no. ring. I'm in the ring, and as soon as he... <laughs> that one elbow that grazes you, that kick, I'm done. Bro, you, you, no, you, bro, no, there's, it's not like boxing, bro. This is UFC. He can get on. on you and pound you until the ref... Get him off of you, bro. You, you didn't say how long. No, you he's going to kill him. you. No, 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 no. He's no. going to kill you. No, because first off, I'm like, hey, bro, you you, you, you know the little situation that I'm <laughs> in, right? It was either you or vomit. Come on, fam. What the, How you feel good about yourself beating on me, dog? I'm 150 pounds, hey, bro. Hey, bro. Nah, I'm going to fight him. You I can't. You fighting. I can't drink vomit. God darn, that's nasty, bro. So you, you going to drink this, this throw up? And your wife right here. Man, that's you, tough, you know, bro. You know what's funny? That's tough, bro. This is how women operate. That's Listen, tough, bro. Women, your wife going to go home <laughs> and hear this hypothetical, like, I really thought I knew you. <laughs> I really thought I... So you just out here drinking throw up? You just... you just, you just So you a vomit drinker. This is yeah. what you do? Yeah, this is what you do. I don't know, no, man. I'm, 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 I don't know, bro. That's a, that's a tough one, bro. Mm -mm. That's a tough and one. whose vomit is it? We don't know. It's just yeah. vomit. Just know it's vomit. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, bro! I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I. Hold on, I that's think, a good I think one. We'll, I think my we'll, man, what you doing? You drinking? Uh, what the, you, 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 you drinking the? You drinking the vomit? You drinking eight ounces of vomit, bro? What's, what's the other one? Or or fighting John Bones Jones in a UFC match? Oh, oh, boom. You getting knocked out, Jordan? What you doing? You fighting? You fight? Oh, I'm fighting. I'm fighting. No, Ain't no, no way. No, don't try to Ain't change no it. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, I ain't, ain't answered yet. I didn't answer yet. And the no, little no, child man. shall lead them. I yeah. couldn't, I couldn't, nah. Look, I couldn't figure no. it out. You was leaning towards. I was leaning towards drinking the vomit. Yeah, nah. Uh -uh. You knocked me out, dog. Oh, my God. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Nah, that's, nah, that's deep. You still get paid if you get Yeah. You still get paid. Okay, see, that's a good point. And? That's a good point. And? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely fighting. See, yeah. I ain't mentioned if we was getting paid. But if we want to throw that in there, we just because it's all hypothetical. Yeah. If we getting paid, oh, I'm fighting. Yeah. That's yeah. That's no brainer. Yeah. Now that's a no brainer because yeah. my family gonna be good. We gonna be good. Yeah. I ain't tripping. No teeth, swollen eye, dislocated. Yeah. I'm cool. Hey, you gonna look like Mar heal. Martin when Martin, he fought Tommy Hitman <laughs> Hearn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know I'm fighting. Yeah, I'm fighting. I'm fighting, bro. All right, man. Look, so, so, uh, what is your who or who is your who is your biggest influence? When it when it comes to comedy, who do you look at it and like, yo, that's that's the that's the bar right there. Man, it's 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 a lot. You know what I mean? Like I, I take from a lot of people. You know, I I, I look at, you know, my uncle mm -hmm. and Chappelle and their ability to like analyze society and make it funny. You and know? you're a different you're a different type of comic from from Unc, right? Yeah. Like he like he was very yeah. you know political like yeah. you know what I mean like he was very like pro black like for his people yeah did you feel any pressure to be that way or are you like nah this is this is no, me and how I'm gonna do it no 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 pressure at all because like it, it, the comparison is not even the same like he was hewn right. out of a different time period like definitely he grew up being called the word nigga yeah yeah so yeah I'm, I'm not gonna be the same dude you right. know what I mean he grew you know what I mean so no, uh, and I mean I am that person. I am very pro black, and you know. So yeah, yeah. with that being yeah. said, I, I was like, I'm gonna do it my way, you know. Yeah. So I've always loved like to be an entertainer, you know what I mean. Hmm. So I love like Cedric the Entertainer, his ability okay. to like imitate and just bring black life to life, <laughs> yeah, right? Like yeah. people like him, Mike Epps, and and stuff like that. So I like to be like a, a mixture. I also like comics who 
could just jump on stage mm. and just have off the top of their dome just freestyle and be joints. funny. So, man, I'm taking like a lot from, I man, dude, I, listen, let me tell you who got me to trust my improv was Mark Curry. Oh, really? I was only supposed to do 10 minutes and he just left me on stage for real. He, it was a two person show at the Funny Bone. They were supposed to light me at 10, but he wanted to watch a basketball game. And it was like five minutes left. You know, five oh minutes goodness. in NBA that's, is really 30. No, that's, that's, yeah, that's so when they really get it in. I, I'm looking for the light, and I just keep going. But I hit this dude with a joke, hit this person, and it's working. Boom, 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 right? Dude come on stage and was like, yo, he gave me a note. Was like, I'm going to go on after you. So this is after I've done 15. Okay. And as a comic that's been in three years, you don't have a strong 15. Mark, mm. Mark pulled me in the green room was like, yo, it's three minutes left in this game. Go up there and stall some more. Oh, my goodness. So I had bro. to go on stage and stall, which is really just me being in the moment, being yeah. funny. But yeah. that situation is like one of them sink or swim situations where it was like, yo, you find out what's in you once you get thrown to the wolves. Dang. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's crazy, bro. But guys like him, though, like there's so many comedians who are under the radar who are super funny, who I love heavily, like, dude, Damon Wayans, mm -hmm. Mark Curry, so many people who've, like, poured into me who are super, super funny, and they masterful, man. Masterful. Yeah. 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 Wow. So guys like that, for real. Wow, that's dope, man. That's yeah. dope to be able to, to pull from different people, yeah. to be inspired by, you know what I mean? That's yeah. why I understand, like, why so much division yeah. and, and hate, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Especially amongst us, man. It's like, Nah, bro, we can get it together, yeah, bro. Like, get we it can together, really, like, yeah. he wasn't afraid to put you out yeah. in, in fear of you killing it. And he like, ah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's what, we, that's what we need more of, man, mm -hmm. is us, us just really loving on each other yeah. and supporting each other and, and pushing each other to, yeah. be, to be great. Yeah. You know, like, I got a family to feed, too, bro. Yeah. Like, and it's enough out here mm -hmm. for us to all... You know what I mean? For us yeah. to all really eat, bro. Yeah. So, yeah. Man, no, nah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's dope, bro. That's dope. Uh... Let me see. Let me see. So I got, I got some. I got, I got a couple. I got a couple more, man. For we, for we get out of here. Oh, bro. go ahead. Take your time, man. But um, but I'm, I'm, man, I'm, I'm, I'm so enjoying myself, bro, with this, with this interview, man. I, I truly appreciate it, bro. Mm -hmm. Um, greatest, greatest accomplishment, and why? Mm -hmm. what, what, what has been your greatest thus, thus far? Man, that is a good question. Yeah, yeah. Um. I feel like, to me, is um, I think it's like fatherhood, right? Ooh. And Ooh. like trying to be strong in those areas where you feel like you're deficient in, right? Mm. Because of your father, what he wasn't able yeah, to absolutely. do. Absolutely, you know, because it's like sometimes, man, you need an example, you know. So yeah. Um, yeah, I just think that, man. Is that your why? Um, no, I, honestly, my why is because, like, this is what I'm called to do and okay. this is what God entrusted me. Okay. But, yeah, you definitely want to put your kids in a better situation. So I think that's it, man. It's just, like, you know, like, just being better than the the benchmark that was set before you and taking it to another level. Yeah. You know yeah, what I, I mean? Think, I think, man, I think my, my greatest accomplishment so far is to have a, to have a business. Mm-hmm that I can do full time yeah. to support my family. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you know, yeah. I don't especially in this economy, bro, yeah. like to have to have a business that does well enough, man. 100%. That we have we have enough support. Yeah. You know, and shout out to all my people who who keep good company, man. Yeah. Like y'all yeah, y'all freaking with you. amazing. The man. world rock with you, heavy, man, man. For real, yeah. bro. It's 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 a because yeah. this is what I realized, man, is that don't nobody have to buy they don't. my product, bro. Don't nobody owe me that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I always, I'm always so thankful. And I always tell mm. my supporters, like when they come to the mall, where they online, whatever, like, man, I might, you, you might get tired of me saying thank you and I appreciate yeah. you, but please don't. Yeah. Please, please let me Dude. say it. You know what I mean? I, Before my mom yeah. passed, man, she told me, Listen, be appreciative when somebody do something for you because don't nobody owe you nothing. Dude, and listen, we we live, I mean, like, dude, Cincinnati, Ohio is the Midwest. It's very yep. blue collar. Yep. So people, they work hard. You know what I mean? So blue collar people, when they spend their money, man, yeah. they don't have to rock with you. you, and you Not at all. Listen, when people give you their money out here, they get look at you in your eye like, hey. Listen. Hey, <laughs> it's my last 20, man. 
You know I rock with you, right? Don't, don't play yeah. with me. Don't play with me. Yeah. Yeah, nah. Yeah. That's, why, that's why I go back to customer service. Mm -hmm. All of that stuff is super important, man, when you got a product. Yeah. You know what I mean? To, mm -hmm. to make sure people feel yeah. appreciated, bro. Yeah. When, 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 they, when, they support your, yeah. when they support your brand. So. Yeah. So to go back to that, though, it, yeah, it, yeah. this one made me think about this, man. I mean, so, you know, I live in New York, mm -hmm. and my children, you know, they live in, in Dayton. And I remember maybe it, it may have been like last year or the year before last, and my daughter had something going on. It may have been like a recital or something. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Daddy, I knew you were coming. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And like, so that. Oh, like my the, goodness. She knows that even though I'm a couple states away. You're going to be there. I'm going to be there. Oh, my goodness, so that, bro. You know, I, think that. That, I think that too, man, like, like you saying, is the freedom to be able to. Yeah. To be able to step out, shut my, you know, like I could shut the store down mm -hmm. if, I, if it's something that yeah. I really need to do, man. Yeah. I have the ability and the freedom to yeah. do that without nobody yeah. checking me about me being somewhere for my kids and, and my yo, family. Bro. That's like, the best that's, part about ooh. about being an entrepreneur. Because oh listen, God. I remember when I had a day job, right? And it's not knocking anybody that has a day job. Oh right? no. Nah. But no. I remember, man, like my friends will come in town and they'd be like, "Yo, man, we going to brunch at noon. Can I? Can you come?" I'm like, "Nah, I, I gotta go to work." Yeah, the freedom, the freedom. Yeah, the freedom, man. That freedom is amazing. No, nah, the, the freedom, the yeah. freedom is super, yeah. super liberating. Man. Yeah. You and then I mean? the beauty of it is also, again, talking about the next generation, the question I asked you earlier mm -hmm. is like one of your children is going to be an entrepreneur because yeah. they see like, yo, I don't have, I could get a job yeah. or I could create my own platform. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, so check this out, man. We did, I did something where it's this, this segment is called Crowd participation. Crowd participation. Right. So I asked uh, I asked some people on Facebook on, okay. on social media a question, mm -hmm. and um, and I'm gonna ask you the same question, right? But I'm gonna, I'm gonna read some of some of the responses from the audience okay. on Facebook, you know, and then you answer. So, what are some of the most important qualities to you? when it comes to friendship, right? Some of the most important qualities to you when it comes to friendship. So go ahead, you can you can answer that and then I'm going to read some of the responses from the audience yeah. on what they say, some of the most important qualities. Man, I think, uh, I think number one, I'm gonna go with loyal. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, I think loyal is extremely important. Okay. Um, giving. No, nah, that's a good one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. loyal giving and um and just being solid man loyal I think loyal giving mm -hmm. and as a man just be a solid dude i'm not asking for perfection yeah but just be a solid dude you know what i mean like if, if yeah if, if if my girl around and i leave don't try to shoot don't yeah yeah just be a solid yeah. dude man and and solid like men understand what solid is absolutely it's like bro. solid is not perfection but it's just like yo donnie is solid dude man. yeah yeah it's, it's it's you know what you know what another word for solid is integrity bro. yeah integrity i try man listen if it's one thing i try to teach my kids is like you don't have to be perfect you don't have to you know um hit the mark every time mm -hmm. but bro you have to have integrity right. you have to be able to be trusted yeah you know what i mean like yeah. you have to be the same person behind closed doors right as you are in public yeah you know what i mean okay so yeah okay and, and so, it's like yeah, also yeah. like honor your word too man like yes. listen yes I'm, and it's one of those things where if you don't think you can do it like i'm gonna be like i'm not sure because i don't want to say i'm gonna do x y and z and then drop the ball so yeah bro yeah, I've, honor had to, your word. I've had to learn that yeah. even with my kids yeah you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah, like yeah and it, it comes from a good place because yeah. you want to do it yeah right but sometimes you'll make this commitment yeah. and it's like, oh, shoot, yeah. like something came up or, right. you know, you don't want to start looking like no liar or yeah. somebody who just don't keep their word. Right. You know and what I, I mean? I think the detriment of that is disappointing someone mm -hmm. is harder to fix than telling somebody no up front. Wow. Wow. That, you hear that? Disappointing someone is harder to fix than just telling somebody no. That's so good, bro. That's so and people and I think people be scared to say no yeah. because you don't because of fear of letting people down. Yeah. Yeah. And like I should be able to tell you no without Absolutely. a why. Absolutely, like, man, I can't bro. do it. No, I don't want to. No, I, I yeah, no. 
No. It's, it, now, let me say this. I think I think you have to reserve a why for, depending on who it is. Depends on who it is. Okay. Yeah. No, I okay. agree. Okay. Okay. No, I agree. Because my wife be like, babe, can you go to oh, the store? Oh, no, 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 no. Like, no. Yeah, yeah. She no, no, be no, like, no, uh, no, no, no. Excuse no, me? No, I wasn't talking about wife. I meant like perimeter I, people I get, get, outside of the immediate family. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, shout out to Tamika Nicole. Okay. She said, um, uh, loyalty. Yeah. Respect. A no judgment zone. Oh, one hundred percent. Support is someone to hold me accountable. Yeah, that part right there. Yeah, somebody who can come and be like, bro, you nah, that yeah. ain't it. You tripping? Yeah, you bugging. So, yeah, so so that's so that was really good. Okay, Yolanda Marie, shout out to Yolanda Marie. She said consistency. Yeah, plain and simple. Behind that, everything else usually falls into uh. Or out of place. Okay. It, without consistency. Consistency, definitely, bro. Like, okay. be, don't be on and off. Mm -hmm. Don't be no on and off friend. I really, I truly feel that. Yeah. Uh, who else? Let me see. Who else says something? Uh, so, Fra Francisca or Fra Francesca. Oh, that, that was not even close. Yeah, yeah Fran, Fran, <laughs> Fran. I'm going to just call her Fran. Fran. Hi, Fran. <laughs> Uh, uh, her last name is Jones. Okay, uh, that's, said, that's hilarious. He said, I'm going to just go with the last name. <laughs> <laughs> she said uh, reciprocity, period. Yeah, that's that's serious, man. Yes. Period. Yeah. Like prerequisite. Man, listen. listen. Don't be. Don't let me do all this stuff for oh, you. Oh, my goodness. And you like, nah, I don't have you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Justin Jones, he said, don't, don't, don't stroke my ego. Okay. If you, if you give me advice, tell me what I need to hear. Yeah. Don't just agree with me. Even if I'm wrong. Okay. So not no, not no yes, man, which yeah. I truly, I truly feel that Squeak Smith. Yeah. Shout out to Squeak. Shout out Squeak. You know what I'm saying? In the building. She said, most definitely loyalty, support, and being there for one another. Yeah. Roxanne said, grace, support, accountability, and fun. Okay. Um, shout out to let me let me let me look, let me read Darnese Lankford. Darn, okay, sister Sh Lankford. Shout out to mom. You know okay. what I'm saying? Oh, this your mom. This mom. This mom's right here. Okay, mom. She said trust, love, understanding, forgiveness. Okay, this that's to, one that wasn't. This starting to sound like the beginning of the In Vogue song. <laughs> trust <laughs> and honesty too <laughs> must be the golden rule. Oh my God, <laughs> must be the golden rule. Hey, trust. Trust, love, understanding, forgiveness, and empathy. Mm. All of my truest friends show me these qualities, and I try to show them the same. No, nah, that's, yeah, that's, mm. yeah, that trust, that that, forgi that forgiveness part, bro. Because mm -hmm. I got a set of homies, man, that if I can't come to you, tell you about yourself, mm -hmm. if if you mad at me, and you can't forgive me because, yeah. bro. At, at that point, it's a—it's not really a relationship. It's a dictatorship. One, if, if, if you gotta yeah. have your way or the highway, like that's—that's that's you being controlling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and no relationship should be that way. So, now nah, shout out to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Crowd participation, man. Yeah. You know, jumping jumping in on that uh, that that segment, man. So, so yeah, man. Last last thing, man. Um, two wishes. You got two wishes, bro. Two wishes. Mm. They could be anything except wishing for more wishes. Two wishes. You got two wishes, bro. What are those two wishes? Mm. Two wishes. Two wishes. Can't wish for more wishes either. Nah, I'm uh, nah. That I would. That wasn't even on my mind. Um, I would wish. That my friends and my family, hmm. we could live forever, mm. and I'm the richest man that ever lived. Okay, and we gonna ball throughout okay. eternity. <laughs> <laughs> we will continue to stunt <laughs> for the next eight million generations. Okay, yeah, okay, that's it. That's both of them. That's both of them. You can live forever. Live forever. And it, my friends and family live forever. Friends and family live forever. And we run the checkup for the rest of the life, for the rest of eternity. Dang, that's good. That's good. Two wishes, bro. Two wishes. Oh my goodness, man. Yeah, I, wish I, I, I wish. And don't say, don't try to show me up and say something all spiritual. No, no, no. <laughs> 
No, then I'm gonna gotta go back and be like, I wish everybody I, I, I changed mine. Right, I changed yeah, mine. like you did with the throw up. <laughs> oh, I'm fighting, bro. Money was in. I'm fighting. Yeah, I'm fighting. I don't know. I might have down the throw up, bro. Before I got every like some bones broken. I don't feel like going through all that for for nothing. Yeah. Just to, just a fight. Nah, man, I ain't on that. But money involved, mm -hmm. yeah, I was scrapping. But I'm, I'm scrapping. be honest with you, I don't. Initially, <laughs> money wasn't involved, so I want to go back and re retract okay, it. At okay. first, it was just throw up it and fight old boy. You fight, you still fight. Yeah. Now you done signed a contract with the UFC. No, that wasn't it. Yeah, you threw. You yeah. threw. Uh, two two wishes, man. I wish. I wish it was more unity. Okay. You know what I mean? I wish it was uh more uh oh 13 minutes all right okay. all right cool so cool cool stretch yeah 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 we, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah we 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 here yeah well i wish i wish it was more unity man i wish it wasn't no so much division yeah you know what i mean mm -hmm. i wish that and um another wish is man i wish i wish my mom was alive to see yeah. all my accomplishments, yeah. bro. Dang. See, here you go. I forgot about my mom. <laughs> <laughs> here you, I told you, fam. What? What? What made you do that? Hey, I, hey he said, he said, I forgot about my yeah, mom. Yeah, I forgot about my mom. Because I mean, I, I mean <laughs> and speaking of that, we kind of in the same boat, man. Yeah. Where. Our mom, like my mom didn't see me get married, bro. Yeah. She ain't seen none of my kids. You know what I mean? Cause she passed away when I was 19. Okay. And you we kind of share that, man. Yeah, like your I was, parents, uh, not, like I they ain't 22. get to see you. Yeah. I was 21. Wow. Yeah. So they ain't get to see none of your none of that. Accomplishments or mm -mm. dang, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a that's that's one of those wishes, man. Mm -hmm. Um is that I, I wish I wish moms would have would have seen me, mm -hmm. but yeah, you know it'd be crazy though if you had like one wish and you could bring back like one parent and they'd be begging like, come on son, please come on pick me. I'll be like, oh wee, <laughs> nah, that would be tough. Yeah, that bro. would be tough. Yeah, that would be tough. To and bring they, and back they come and plead your case. You know what'd be oh, funny though? God. Are you sitting here? I'll be like, you, I'll be like, dad, you you know it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Now, remember I asked you to give me a little starter coat. <laughs> no, remember I asked you to give me a little starter coat when I was 13. Now, now you begging for your life. Now, now you begging right? for your life back. And then they be like, Ma, re remember when you whooped me with the little extension cord? I was like, can you stop? But you kept going. I got to deliberate on this a little oh bit. Oh, my yeah. God, That'd be bro. crazy, though. Nah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. So, so um, one, one of the last things I always want to do, man, is, is give out a good a good business tip man so mm -hmm. so so now we we at we at Donnie's good business tips okay. you know you. what i'm saying so i always want to give out a good business tip on our show man just uh -huh. just so people who may be trying to be entrepreneurs or yeah. you know in marketing branding and marketing is like my thing bro like i really enjoy branding and marketing so my, my business, and I'm going to ask you to share something, just dealing with business, man, like which, what's important for you, what should people who are trying to get into business, you know what I mean? What's some of the things that they need to, to look out for? So my business tip is, mar I want people to understand that marketing is food for your business, just like uh, 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 how you need to eat, food to, to, to live and to sustain your body, like marketing is the same way for your business. Right. If you go days without marketing and promoting your business, just understand that it's going to get weak mm -hmm. and it's going to die. Right. So we can't be afraid to market our brand and be creative yeah. in marketing. You have to be creative because we see between 4,000 and 10,000 ads a day, a yeah. day, bro. Right. So that's that's so many brands that's fighting for your attention. Mm -hmm. So you have to be diligent. You can't be scared to push and market your product yeah you know what i mean and you have to you have to do it in various ways yeah. right a lot of people only think that you can market on social media and it's tons of people i'm learning it's tons of people that don't know about guerrilla marketing yeah. which is everything outside of the internet yeah like grassroots like yeah. grassroots bro like flyers mm -hmm. uh, being on the back of buses uh uh posters hanging up yeah you know all of that stuff is you know i got yard signs like mm -hmm. all this stuff is is marketing mm -hmm. your product so 
man give a give a give a, a business tip man maybe something you learned you mm -hmm. like oh i'm glad i did this yeah. you know what i mean yeah so this isn't what I'm, I'm gonna say this but to add on to your point though it's, it's kind of like a point that i made earlier when i referenced like yeah. the battery yeah i always looked at my fan base and people that rock with me as a battery. Mm -hmm. So from a marketing standpoint, that's how I look at it. So if someone asks me, yo, um, or if I'm doing a show or any type of thing, yeah. I always ask myself, is this worth draining my battery for? Mm. Right? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, is this worth draining the battery for? And I think sometimes people market so much or have so many things that they try to push down people's throat yeah because they're trying to make money that it's like when you really need them to show up they're not there because you spread them out so so thin ah so it's like okay yeah if we looking at a calendar year what are the events that i need people to come to right yeah okay is it gonna be four big events that i need people to come to mm -hmm. and boom they're gonna come to them yeah but just know that you spreading your battery out then yeah or, you know so i always look at it from that perspective absolutely right um but i think the biggest thing is one thing that i learned is um is sending people thank you cards oh thank you cards mm. or drop like a um a 25 dollar gift card that's good you know because so i deal in the world of promoters yeah promoters are always promoters or comedy club owners mm. are always getting hit up right like yo you got any available dates you got any available dates and if somebody gives you a, a show that's dope this a good look yeah it's a good amount of money in your in, in, in your in your pocket yeah send them a thank you card absolutely or That's dope. a twenty-five dollar gift card. Yeah. Because out of the hundred people that they booked, I guarantee you're gonna be the only one that did that. They did that. So no, when it comes down to next year, <clears throat> who they gonna think? You're gonna be at the top of the list. Absolutely. You That's know? dope marketing. Yeah. That's and it super was, dope um, marketing. So listen, the guy who books the uh the funny bone, mm -hmm. who books 17 clubs, his name is Dave Stroop. Okay. This is when I was trying to break in, right? I mean, man, listen, he was like, I just need to see you more. He's like, I know you funny. But sometimes it's just you. People just gotta see you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because people gonna get the opportunities to close proximity or who they see. Yeah. Right? So yeah. I would just drive to Columbus and just hang out at the at the bar of the comedy club, and he would walk by. I'm like, Yo, I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Not only that, dude, he was an Ohio State fan. I got him a Ohio Ohio State T-shirt. Wow. And Ohio State fitted cap. You know what I mean? And it's just like lasting it's stuff, impression, bro. Lasting impression. And that's what companies do. Send you a gift basket with a bottle of wine in it. Yeah. yeah like they trying to make a mark. So I think stuff like that, man. That's dope. Yeah. That's that's dope. Well, we got we got something for you, man. Oh, we got something perfect for you, segue. wifey. Wifey, come on. Oh. Bring, bringing, bringing. You know what I'm saying? This, this is from us, man. Us to you from Good Company. Shout out to Good Company Apparel. You know what I'm saying? A brand encouraging individuals to wear who you are and live what you believe. We all about keeping good company on us uh. and around us. You know what I'm saying? So it's a little gift, man. Uh. You know what I'm saying? Good vibes. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, and that's a size small, but like a David small. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't think you had to announce that. I mean, I'm just saying, <laughs> I wanted to I let people up, know. They knew what it was. I don't think the tag yeah. wasn't showing. It, so what it's it, it showing what it say on the back because this is true. Yeah. This is very true. Yeah. It says. <laughs> <laughs> I had to read it first. I, I didn't want to joke on you, and I stumbled through my lines, right? I had to go ahead. I was, uh, I can't vibe with everybody, not which everybody. is true. You can't not vibe everybody. With everybody. You can't. You yeah. can't. So that's, that's, people, that's from good company, some man. Some people, your spirit's not right. Your spirit's not right. They don't come around me with an evil come on, somebody. bad spirit. Huh? Yeah. Get on from around yeah, here. Get, get the away from get me. The, <laughs> Satan? Yeah. Get on from around here. So... Uh, so yeah, man, we uh we we appreciate you, bro, coming out, man, sharing yeah. sharing your time, man. I know your time is valuable, yeah. bro. We wanted to bless you, man. man that's I that's your that's your that's your uh this, tumbler. This is my you know tumbler. what I'm saying? You take that with you. Take, we ain't want yeah. nobody else drinking out of that. Ooh, I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, man. Yeah. And uh, man, keep keep doing what you're doing, man. Yeah. You are you are bringing so much joy to people, bro. Um, people, you know, after the after the show last night, man, people was going crazy, bro. They they loved you. And man, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy for you, bro. I remember man. I met you decades ago, bro, at this church, and it was the first time I ever heard of Christian comedy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And um, I was blown away, bro. I was blown away at at your gift, man. So yeah. so keep going, man. Any any last word, man? Tell people where they can where they can follow you at and all that, bro. Man, you can follow me on uh, Instagram at Comic Mark Greg. Absolutely. C O M I C M A R K G R E G. 
Yeah. Um, I post all of my shows on there. And uh, yeah, man, so if I come to your city or your town, come rock out with me. Go see this fool. Yeah. Please go see Please. this fool. Pull up. Right? Right? Yeah. Appreciate it, man. man. <laughs> well, that's my time. I love y'all. I need y'all to get it together so that we can get it together. Peace.